Hello. Yes, uh, every time I watch Harris Hilton's videos, it just keeps, uh, just keeps me going, to be honest with you. Um, just love uh, the eclectic, eclectic season of um, his uh, collecting. And it um, doesn't matter if the albums are the covers are all falling off with price stickers on them you know it, it's, it's a real antidote to um, some, some of these other uh, neurotic anal collectors out there um, so I thought I'd show this one I think this is one that HP would approve on. Up there. Yeah, I did play this, uh, I think it was last year. Um, oh, fantastic. Ah, uh, yeah, so what we'll do. Everything's a, a balancing act out here. Yes, this is um, a terrific, terrific album from 1985. Mark Stewart, as the veneer of democracy starts to fade, very influential. There's the rear panel. He was in the pop group in the early 80s. One of those one bunch of wonderful bands that came out around that time. You know, most of them didn't last long. You know, Orange Juice, so many of them. It goes the bunny, it goes on and on. But uh, I used to have a lot of those 45s and I wish I still had them. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so this is uh, him in 85. So he's moved on from the pop group and this is when he was doing that, that Mafia thing um, with the On You, the On You sound and all that stuff going on. Um, Adrian Sherwood, there's a name to, to yes, to, we all know. LeBlanc, Keith LeBlanc. Now, Doug Wimbish, I think he was in the pop group. I'm not sure about Adrian Sherwood. Jeez, I don't know. And Skip McDonald too. So I know the names, but in my old age, I'm sort of forgetting which bands they are in. But it uh, doesn't matter really. But because they they jumped around and from group to group. And, but this one, all well, um, I love this. This is because it's uh, yeah. This is a second hand, I've got the second hand from, I'll show you in a minute, from Ashwood's famous, famous Sydney second hand shop that's been there, that's gone now, but it was there for a hundred years almost, you know, down in um, the dirty part of town. What the Americans call downtown, you know, down with all the porno shops and the, you know, <laughs> The, what do you call it? Uh, where you buy your army surplus and all that stuff. Um, this was a tribute, of course, to a famous label. Though it's not quite as, it's a bit more jagged than the, than the Vertigo one. And. <coughs> Yes, see, there's a pencil mark there, it's a price. I know that writing so well because I went to Ashwood from the late 60s right through to the early 2000s. They had a massive, massive, massive second hand. You know, they, they had a top floor that was nothing but jazz, 
and we're talking good jazz, you know, like blue notes. Sec all second hand, but you know, you could find some real gems in there, but you had to really, really um, be physically fit to get up those stairs, to bend over, pick up the, the, the milk crates to go through the stuff. You had to go through so much stuff to find things. If you weren't fit, well, you wouldn't make it, but um, yeah, that's the writing, and I know that guy's writing, so I sold a shitload of my albums to him in the 1990s. I regret it now. Um, yeah, all songs written by Mark Stewart. It's, um, yeah, well, you know, the on you sound. Everyone knows that, don't they? But anyway, um, this was a highly, highly influential album. Um, Nick Cage and a lot of these other people uh, rate this one very, very highly. So I haven't got much to say about it, really, is that, except that it stands up very well um, almost 40 years later. And um, I played it last year. <laughs> and I was pleasantly surprised. I went, yeah, this it still, still has... Uh, the edge. So, not more, much more to say about it, really. I think that's the only thing I have by him. But if you look inside the, you, you probably won't know. You won't be able to see it. You can just about see. See my finger pointing there. That, that's the Ashwood sticker. They put a, a stick, a, a stamp. You know, they, they didn't worry about. They weren't exactly into um, pristine conditions. They put these huge pencil mark prices on the on the actual. This one's pretty small. On there. But, but, you know, they put this huge thick pencil mark on there. Um, and they put their stamp on the cover and, and, and sometimes they just put stickers on the actual album covers and on the, on the vinyl itself. So they weren't, um, let's just put it this way, I don't think they were music lovers, so they were just, you know, it was, it was, it was a classic Jewish um, thing. So, you know, central in Sydney was a lot of Jewish uh, businesses there and, and they were great we, we loved it because we got good, good deals good bargains but like a lot of those shops of that era um, it was just everything was just packed and stacked to the ceiling and you, you had to do the hard work they were good prices but you had to work really to work to find things that were worth getting there but um, so that's just my little thing for the day and usually whenever I see Harris Pilton videos I get all excited about music again you know because when you get to 70 over like me it, it's it's like I said in one of my previous videos some of these people are getting heavily into highly expensive audio file gear and and um, you know expensive um, remakes or you know you know what I mean uh, all this business um, they got to be careful because well, when you get to 70 trust me you, you, you won't want to listen to music at all hardly ever you know you won't find many people over 70 getting up whacking on music and playing it all day you know when you get to this, I spent all my life listening to music from 8 to 50, oh, mid 50s, that's a long time, it's about 50 years and first thing I did in the morning was get up and put on records and play them as I was getting ready to go to work and then I put them, as the years rolled by, I'd um, play the Walkman in the train all the way, you know, into Sydney, listening to the Walkman, get out, walk up to work.
wherever my jobs were at the time, was singing some music on the walkman. Um, it was just at work in dark rooms. I spent most of my life working in dark rooms. And one of the reasons why is that I could turn the, um, just shut the door and put the red light on so no one would come in and just stay in there reading music magazines and listening to music all day. And then doing all my work, my whole day's work in an absolute fury of, um, in an hour, you know, and the rest of the day I was just sitting there listening to music and reading um, Record Collector, NME, sometimes the Melody Maker, that was never a great one. Oh, good oh, this was supposed to be a quick video about Mark Stewart, and already I'm going off too much, going on too long. So, uh, yeah, um, so if anyone out there sees that around, and you ha don't have it, or you've never heard it, even though it's from 85, it, it's like that post-industrial, it's hard to, hard to describe, you know, they, they influenced a lot of bands, um, Mark Stewart, he influenced a lot of bands, and, um, so it, it, it's, it's got, it's got everything, you know, it's just, the only other album I can think of that sort of comes close is Introducing by DJ Shadow, and that's, it's not, that's not even right, because, that's all samples, and that's a masterpiece. But this has got sampling in it. Um, it's like 10 years before that. So anyway, I have waffled already. I never learn. Take care.